What up, guys, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. In this week's episode, I'm talking about how to boost visibility within the Apple Podcast search. And so in this episode, I'm going to be uncovering four things. The first is why Apple Podcast search rankings matter. The next is podcast SEO basics that are going to help you come up higher in search. The third is how Apple Podcast search actually works From the words of Apple themselves, they've documented this. I'm going to link to it. And the last is some myths about Apple podcast search rankings and kind of what some people in the industry think versus what Apple has actually said. Okay, so podcast SEO basics. For those that don't know, SEO stands for search engine optimization. And search engine optimization is what webmasters and website owners use to get their website to appear higher up on Google. But there's actually podcast SEO basics too, or podcast SEO techniques that can help your podcast appear higher up within Apple podcast search. And so I'm going to uncover a few things here and how you can think about starting to improve your podcast SEO uh, so that you do come up higher and more often in search. So the first, this might sound, well, I don't know how it sounds, but the first one is the name of your podcast. So context and relevance are going to be key. And I got to be completely honest, the name of this show, Clipped, I've actually been thinking about how I could change it to come up more in search because I talk about a lot of podcast tools and services and techniques and how to do this in podcasting and how to grow and monetize and how to do that and blah, blah, blah. But the name of the show is Clipped. And so just using myself as an example, Clipped, um, really, in my mind, it, I clip as in like clipping an audio file, like editing audio. Um, but I don't know that Clipped really encompasses what the show is about. And thus, I think that has made the show struggle a little bit in terms of organic discovery and, and ranking higher because... If someone types into Apple Podcasts, like how to produce a podcast, like, yes, I have episodes on that, but the show is a whole clipped. The the word clipped isn't really related to the keywords, like how to produce a podcast or how to start a podcast. And so I think when someone types in those podcast search phrases, clipped isn't necessarily coming up because it doesn't really relate. In my mind, it kind of does, but in terms of like the search gods, I think there's a disconnect there. And so that's just using myself as an example. But that's kind of why the name of your show is so so important because it tells potential listeners what the show is about. Clipped. Mm, I don't think that really tells people that this show is about podcasting. Um, listeners and the algorithm need context. And so if the name doesn't reflect the focus of the show, it can confuse the algorithm, which may harm search results thus reducing organic discoverability. But all that to say, believe it or not, your podcast, is if you've named it correctly, is going to contain keywords and search terms literally in the name of the show. So let's say you have a show called Eco Travel Adventures. Well, that's going to be great for search because people are typing in several keywords related to that. They might be typing in eco-friendly travel, eco-hotels, uh, eco-travel, adventure travel, uh, eco-travel adventure. So by naming your show something like that, that has kind of keywords built into it, people are going to search for relevant terms naturally that relate to the name of the show. Thus, uh, you're going to have a better chance of coming up within the Apple Podcast app. So you can see the difference there, eco travel adventures versus like a show like mine, Clipped, where there's a lack of context there and Clipped, how I clipped my hair. It's just, you could see how Clipped doesn't relate to my show where eco travel adventure, there's a lot of opportunity there. Now, I'm not saying you have to 100% rename your show or if you haven't started yet and you're listening to this, uh, come up with a name specifically for like search. But I think it's something to consider. 
although overall branding and vibe long term might matter more or at least matter a lot. So if you do have a catchy name that's not necessarily related to what the show is about, like Nike, for instance, like back in the day, if someone just said Nike, you wouldn't really know that that's about sports. It doesn't tell you anything about sports. It's just a word, Nike. Uh, but long term, they were able to get brand recognition. And so that is possible, but it's just something to think about. If you're starting out, keyword friendly uh, is key. Okay, so the same with episode titles. Um, you want to think of episode titles as they relate to people typing in search phrases. So as I mentioned earlier, how to improve my golf swing, how to trade stocks, how to land a kickflip. It doesn't always have to be how to, but it could be um, using the eco travel adventures. It could be like sustainable, the show eco travel adventures. This particular episode is called sustainable tourism in Costa Rica. So then you're going to also rank in that case for words around Costa Rica, tourism in Costa Rica, sustainability, eco tourism, Costa Rica. If it's how to land a kickflip, why? Is kick flipping so easy or why is doing a kick flip so hard? The history of the kick flip, the first skater to land a kick flip. Uh, So just think of episode titles as well uh, in the vein of like, if you were a listener and you wanted to find something out and you typed it into Apple Podcast Search, um, what would you type and what would you expect to come up based on what you typed? I think that's a good rule of thumb. Okay, so now let's talk about how Apple Podcast Search actually works. Well, per Apple, and I'm going to link to this in the show notes, but they break down the search algorithms uh, effectiveness based on three things, metadata, popularity, and user behavior. Okay, so at its most basic level, podcast metadata is the information that tells you like what the podcast is about. I kind of think of this... Also, like in the podcast SEO umbrella, because it's stuff that you absolutely need to do uh, to improve your chances to rank. But within metadata, Apple's talking about author, making sure like your name or your production company's name is listed, show title, show description, uh, which is the description of your show which comes up within the Apple Podcast listening app. The show description needs to tell the listener what the show is about. Uh, This is an episode about X, and it's interesting because of Y and Z. Or this is a show about X, where Y will teach you how to get Z results. And it's important within the show description to weave in some of the keywords related to the theme of your show. For instance, this is a show that explores the world of vintage guitar collecting. In it, we chat with expert collectors about how to begin, expand, and profitably sell vintage guitars. So within that description, there are several keywords related around vintage guitars, vintage guitar collecting, guitar collecting, how to sell vintage guitars, where to buy vintage guitars, expert guitar collectors, how to sell and make money from guitars. So you want to think of your show description as similar to how I was talking about like your podcast name or your episode titles. You want keywords in that description uh, that somebody might search for. So like, let's say I'm searching for how to start an electric or how to start a vintage guitar collection. Well, I've got that in my description. Maybe the name of my show is Vintage Guitar Collectors. Or maybe it's the world of vintage guitars, something like that. Um, So it's like the show name, the description, then in some of my episode titles, I'm going to weave that in. All that falls under the metadata slash SEO umbrella. But also when it comes to metadata, think about things like um, category, making sure your show is in like the correct category or, or subcategory. You don't want a show about guitars in the travel category in Apple. Um, You know, it's not as popular now, but back in the day, people would like put their show, say it was about guitars, they'd put it like in the travel category if the travel travel category had like less competition and less shows because it would be quote unquote like easier to rank. But I think now that that's not as popular, I think people were getting penalized. And so that was like a uh, industry practice that's long gone. But there are some categories that are more competitive than others like business and education, Um, And if you have a business or education show, put it in one of those categories. Don't put it in like leisure. 
just because you think you're crafty in that, it's going to be easier to rank within leisure. So that's part of metadata too, just making sure the category is on point, making sure the, the language is marked if it's an English podcast. Basically, it's all these like little things that you can do within your podcast hosting platform and within Apple Podcast Connect just to make sure that, um, you know, those little data points are all aligned and are all accurate. Um, that'll just help you help Apple understand more and more about what your show's about and who it's for. So that's something that just at the very basic level, Apple is saying uh, is factored into their search algorithm. Okay, the next is popularity. And I'm going to quote... And under popularity, Apple literally says podcasts with large followers and plays in Apple podcasts. Okay, so how does that work? It's almost like a uh, chicken before the egg thing because how are you going to come up in the search if your show's not popular? But if your show's not popular, how are you going to come up in the search? And so kind of the way that I took this is that you have to do everything you can in your power to drive potential listeners to Apple to listen to your show. So you want to make your show as popular as you can on your own so that you're driving traffic to Apple Podcasts and people are listening. And then that listening is going to in turn trigger the algorithm to favor you more. Um, but how do you you know, grow and make the show popular on your own? Well, there's a lot of different ways and I've talked about it in numerous episodes, but email list. You have an email list. Start promoting episodes that drive traffic to Apple Podcasts. Go on other podcasts in your niche. I'm sure you'll get to talk a little bit about your podcast. The host of that show will probably uh, link to your show in the show notes. Um, you can tell them to put an Apple Podcast link. That's a good way to drive traffic. Start advertising your show. Um, do whatever you can to build your own following within your own sphere of influence, but then try to drive those people to listen on Apple so that your show, quote unquote, becomes more popular. So that triggers the search algorithm to kick in more. And then while that's happening, if you've got all this SEO stuff and metadata stuff optimized, then once that search algorithm starts kicking in because the episodes are getting more popular, uh, that's even better and that even beefs things up more to rank towards the top for specific search terms. Okay, the next one that Apple says is user behavior. And quote unquote, they say, podcasts with high engagement, such as those that are played or followed from search results. So it's funny, right? Because how are they going to be played from search results if they're not if those shows and episodes aren't coming up in the search results. So I think that kind of goes back to like driving the traffic and, and trying to get as many people as you personally can into uh, listen on the app. And then the algorithm's going to see that, you know, the engagement is high and that because people are, are going more and more there to listen, the episodes are getting more popular. And so the algorithm is kicking in to boost some of those uh, episodes towards the top for search terms related to those episodes. And then that user behavior is going to see that those episodes are being played from search results specifically because they're coming up more. Um, and so that's going to help the user engagement piece. It's a little confusing. Hopefully that made sense to you guys. It's kind of like... Uh, where they say getting a job. It's like you need experience to get a specific job, but how do you get experience if you don't have that specific job? It's kind of like a situation with that. And it seems even a little confusing to me, but I think I've wrapped my head around it. So that's apparently how Apple Podcast Search works. Metadata, popularity, and user behavior. Okay, so just for fun, let's talk about some myths. Uh, so Apple Podcasts ratings and reviews don't factor into search results, which is kind of a bummer because it's kind of like, I don't know, you would think if you're getting like a lot of five-star reviews and people are leaving awesome comments that the algorithm would see that and start pushing your show to more people. But apparently that that does not work or, or it's not related at all. So ratings and reviews, although they are good social proof, like it's kind of like Yelp. If someone 
is talking about a restaurant in a positive light and leaving great reviews, I think people are going to want to eat at that place because of it's talked about in a favorable light. It just adds like social proof. Of course, like things that are being hyped up, other people want to be involved with. Um, the next is consumption rate, episode consumption rate. And this means like how far along did people listen? Did they listen to the entire episode? Did they consume 100% of it? Did they consume 30% and then they stopped listening? Did they consume 75% and then they dropped off? Apparently consumption rate has nothing to do with Apple podcast search. And this is taken from Apple again, which I will link to. But there used to be talk that consumption did matter. And that if you had you know, a high consumption rate, like, or even just an above average one that would help the search algorithm. But I guess that's not true. Um, and you can find that out at Apple Podcast Connect, which you can go in and check your consumption rate across all your catalog. But that's it, guys. I just wanted to kind of explain how Apple search works based on Apple's own words, um, how you can boost up your SEO with. Uh, show descriptions, episode titles, maybe tweaking the name of your show. I challenge you to implement some of this stuff within your show and see what begins to happen within Apple Search and your rankings within Apple Search. And hopefully you'll be pleasantly surprised. And you'll start to get a few more listeners brick by brick, baby. Uh, but that's it for me today, guys. Keep listening, keep engaging, and keep creating. I'm out.